What is going on members of the Shy Guy Squad, fans of the Rosa Raiden Borg and GBA type people alike. My name is Dan, otherwise known as Donicky, and welcome to the first week of the GBA D League. I am excited to be here for you guys as your main coach of the Rosa Raiden Borg here in week one against Magic Activator and his Memphis Drizzlers featuring none other than the Gigalith Pebble in the background. Hopefully it's not too annoying. I hope it's not too annoying. But as you guys can see here from matchup, I brought myself today, as you guys saw from the team builder hopefully, uh, Frostlass, Stunfisk, Darmanitan, Espeon, Magirna, and Mega Absol. And my opponent has brought him with him today a Mianshell, Lando T, Mega Venusaur, Jolteon, Milotic, and a Cartana. And with that being said, let's see how this match went, shall we? So my good friend magic activator that i've gotten to know here in this league has sent a challenge and the 6,000 life points are set i'm gonna lead off with my frostlass though my focus has lead uh frostlass as he leads off with ty lee the man shall now what i am planning on doing here is i have a game plan and it requires me getting up a spike and a stealth rock so i'm gonna lead off with frostlass as he goes for the knockoff revealing to me that he's a choice scarf man shall and I am going to just set up my first layer of Spike and the only layer I'm going to be able to get up this match. Spoiler alert. So I'm going to swap out right now because I want to preserve my Frostlass real quick. So I'm going to go into Lady Nikki Mangirna which is holding the Psychium Z. Meaning that Mian Shao can't uh, knock me off and therefore knockoff is not going to do that much damage. So Ty Lee is here and it's going to swap out. And I want to find what is his Mangirna switch in and it is Summer Breeze the Venusaur. Now, I thought about clicking my Psychic Z move, but I held against it because I wasn't sure if that was going to be his ideal switch in. So, what I did instead was I went into Stunfisk because I thought his switch in was going to be something like Landorus and I have a Shooka Berry so I could deal with it. Now, what I'm going to do here is as he Mega Evolves, I know that a uninvested Giga Drain doesn't even do half to my Stunfisk. At a max roll, it does like 54, so that is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up my Stealth Rocks, ladies and gentlemen, as he reveals to do, he does indeed have the Giga Drain, and he is indeed uninvested due to that damage roll. I think that was a very min roll, actually, maybe a little bit of a mid roll, but this, of course, allows me to put up my rocks, and now my game plan has been set in motion. I have my rocks up, I have my spike, which means that I am good to go now for the rest of this game. What this game allows me to do now is I'm going to send an Espeon in case he wants to try to leave seed or do anything like that kind of shenanigans predicting me to switch out. But he does go for the Giga Drain which does nothing to my near max HP Espeon because you know that's Espeon for you right there. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to set up a Calm Mind. Because Calm Minds can allow me to set up on Venusaur, this thing is not a particular threat to me. And I can hit him with a really, really strong Psychic back because Espeon is one of the only Pokemon on my team, barring Magirna, that can really deal with Venusaur from max HP. So what I'm going to do is uh, go for the uh, go for the Calm Mind as he goes for the Sludge Bomb. And with that, he gets the Poison, which is very unfortunate because that is going to come into play in a couple of turns. So... Now that I am plus one and my opponent is currently at plus, um, well he's neutral, but I'm at plus one, ah, uh, special defense and special attack. So I'm going to go for a psychic right here, and that is going to do a fat chunk to this Venusaur. As you see, it drops him down to about 20%, maybe 18, and it gets a spadef drop, which is just a massive shout out to Espeon. But, Venusaur is going to reveal to have Earthquake, which I did expect, um, so he's going to go for the Earthquake. He leaves me at 8 HP, and I get leftovers. Now, catch my breath real quick. Whew. Uh, but because of the poison, Espeon is going to faint. Uh, if Espeon didn't get poisoned, I would have been alive still, and I would have lost my 1,000 life points right there, which is very unfortunate. But what this allows me to do is get into Malicious Fiend, my Mega Absol, so that is also kind of nice. I'm just going to pop my Mega Evolution right here, and I'm going to show to him that I am in fact a special Absol, as you guys are about to see. So, as you guys can see right there, I go for the beautiful Mega Evolution from Mega Absol, and uh, I'm just going to click, as I mentioned earlier, Dark Pulse. And that is going to be more than enough to take down this Venusaur from 18% with a special defense drop. So, Venusaur is down, we're tied back again at 5,000 to 5,000 live points, and he sends in his Scarf Mianshao. Now, 
This play that happens right now is also going to be very crucial and has about the same percentage chance to happen as the poison from Venusaur. So I'm going to switch into my I'm going to switch into my Stun Fisk expecting the U-turn because I know he's Scarf and he's not going to drop a high jump kick for as long as my Frostlass is still alive. So he does in fact go for the U-turn and I activate my Thunder Giant special ability which is upon contact it can paralyze one opponent on the opposing side of the field. Of course that's not Thunder Giant's actual effect but it is my Thunder Giant's effect. So he's going to U-turn out into Kartana and here I'm going to have to make a couple doubles. So Kartana takes some damage from the spikes and from the uh, rocks. Now I know he's going to click Leaf Blade here because I'm expecting him to be like Leaf Blade, Sacred Sword, Night Slash and uh, Smart Strike. So I'm going to have to go into Magirna here first to take the Leaf Blade. And now the best move he has to hit me with is his Stab Smart Strike. I know he's not going to click Sacred Sword because Smart Strike just does more and Magirna is such a threat to his team. Now of course I'm also scouting to see if he's Scarf or not. But as I find out right now from going into Darmanitan uh, is that he isn't Scarf because he goes for Bartrek. If he was Scarf, I don't think he would stay in on my Magirna. So I found out he's not Scarf. I'm going to successfully scare out his Kartana, finding out that he thinks I am a Scarf Darmanitan, but in fact I'm actually Charcoal. So that plan could have really backfired if he stayed in and clicked something like Sacred Sword. But of course I went off and got my plan off. So Darmanitan right here is going to click U-turn and we're going to pivot ourselves out from this melodic into our uh, in a minute here as soon I'm getting a bit ahead of myself I'm going to pivot out into my malicious fiend again my evil hero malicious fiend the beautiful shiny mega absol and now the only way that this doesn't work out which is what I want to scout for because I I can get this opportunity again I want to find out is he haze dragon tail or anything like that so I'm going to click calm on right here and as you guys are about to see from his next play is that my opponent opts to go for the recover as I get my plus one plus one going. Sorry, my teeth are hitting each other. Wow. Unprofessional, but he gets off the recover, which is fine. I'm going to set up a second call mine just to figure out, is this thing haste? Is it dragon tail? Anything like that? Does it have a way of stopping me? So I'm going to click my second call mine. If it's haste, that's fine. I can work my way around haste. Um, but... If he's Dragon Tail, I have Magirna I can get into, so he goes for Mirror Coat, probably not remembering that Mirror Coat is unaffected on my Absol, so I'm going to set up a third call mine because I know now he probably doesn't have anything to hit me with. And I like the sound of that, because if I can successfully do my plan, then I can clean sweep through his team right now. So as you guys are about to experience, I'm about to click Baton Pass, and who am I going to go out into? Summon Obelisk the Tormentor! Attack now! No! No! That is right, in comes my lady Nikki the Magirna again. Now it is currently at plus three, plus three, and knowing that this my Lottie can't do anything to me, I'm gonna set up one shift gear because now I outspeed everything I need to outspeed on his team. Now there's one Pokemon that still speeds me, but it's not too big of a deal. So, Magirna now, plus three, plus three, plus two, with plus one attack. It's time to drop the Z move, boys. It's time for us to use the Shattered Psyche coming off of Synchronoise. This Shattered Psyche has about a 50% chance to one-hit KO a specially defensive Milotic. If it's physically defensive, this thing is just straight gone. I think a minimum damage roll for a physically defensive one was like 120%, and a max special defense one was 91 to 107, I believe the roll was. So, in comes Glitch the Jolteon, and uh, it can try as it must, but... I'll tell you guys right now that this thing's Thunderbolt isn't exactly the strongest. Just just check this out, guys. <laughs> yeah, this thing's uh this thing's Thunderbolt didn't exactly do a lot to my beginning. It did put me in the yellow. I'll give it respect where it's due, but uh it kinda just 
it was just a shame at that point, but it's probably the best he could do because nothing else outspeeds me. So in comes Paper Cut. I know this thing isn't Scarf, and if it is max speed, it can't kill me regardless. So, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to pop my hidden tech. My hidden tech being Synchronoise. This is also another reason why I will see Synchronoise, because it allowed me to hit Kartana too, which was really, really fun. So now we're up 5-2, or 5,000 to 2,000 life points. Magirna is going on a tear in its attack mode, and it just keeps getting boasted because of Soul Heart. And by now, I think it is plus 6, because it did knock out the Milotic, getting it to plus 4, knocked out Jolteon to plus 5, and now as well the... Um... What was in front? What was in front of it is just now Kartana to get the plus six. So Boomy, the Lando T, just drops as well, making the score five thousand to one thousand life points, and it's not looking good for my good friend Magic Activator here, as his Regenerator Mianxiao is paralyzed and it's Choice Scarf, and that isn't really ideal. So what I am going to do right here is I'm going to click Dazzling Gleam just to get this over with. That is of course going to be more than enough to obliterate this man shout and that is going to take the game to a 5-0 victory in week 1 over the Memphis Drizzlies and their coach Magic Activator. So your Rosa Rainborg are starting off really clean in the GBA D League and next week we take on my good friend Jolt of the Token Minorities and his Toronto Star Raptors. That is going to be a very exciting match and I hope you guys are excited to see that. If you did enjoy though, be sure to leave a like and comment down below let me know what you thought, uh, thought of the match and how you think about my gear and draft league format. But with that being said as well, if you are new and this is your first video because of the GBA, be sure to subscribe as there will be more GBA content every week up until at least playoffs if we can make it, maybe even as far as we can go and maybe something more in the future. But with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. And with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. Talk to you guys next time. Before I wrap up, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters that you see on screen right now. Helping me with my goals and also with uh, future problems. With that being said, hope you guys have enjoyed and I hope to see you guys in the next video.